Hey, everybody. Before we start today's podcast, I want to ask uh, my listeners and viewers uh, if you can help us out. Vermont uh, has been impacted by a very significant flood um, that has created the same levels of destruction that we saw in Irene uh, over a decade ago. There are a lot of people suffering. Uh, a lot of uh, just impacts to businesses, homes, you know, livelihoods. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a very, very long recovery. Thankfully, um, Vermont has done a fantastic job uh, learning a lot from Irene. Um, and so I think we mitigated a lot more impacts than we probably would have. Um, but we're not actually out of this yet. There's still... Uh, I mean, we've had multiple nights of just heavy, heavy rainfall, you know, creating more issues around the state, including landslides and stuff. If you're in Vermont and uh, you need help or if you want to help and you're in Vermont or outside of Vermont, vermont.gov slash flood. That website is, has become sort of the one stop shop for information about how to take care of your own stuff if you're a victim of the uh, floods as well as uh, for folks who want to help. It has information on volunteering. It has information on donations. Um, remember, donate cash over stuff unless there's very specific things are asked for. Cash is just so much more um, flexible and valuable in a disaster. And taking stuff in actually takes a lot of logistics and resources away from responding to the disaster. So again, major, major disaster. Uh, you know, we're still sort of in the process of assessing uh, how bad it is and what the long term impacts will be. Um, but uh, we're I think all of us, you know, as a Vermonter my entire life, you know, other than a few short years, um, I we just we can't thank people enough for the help they've already provided. Um, and, you know, there's still just so much help that's needed. So. That's my pitch. Uh, I would really appreciate uh, any help that you uh, can provide. Uh, share the resource vermont.gov slash flood um, so that other people can help. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, maybe on the next episode, we'll have good news um, and, and sort of start to uh, get out of this. But but we're in it right now. So I appreciate any help you can provide. Thank you. Uh, and I think it's an appropriate way to open up an emergency management podcast with a with the ongoing disaster. Um, and you uh, have uh, a background that I'm sure you've seen all sorts of disasters. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to have you on here. RJ is with TraumaSoft, uh, and I'll have him talk a little bit about that. But first and foremost, who are you? What's your background? How did you get here? <clears throat> well, I appreciate being on, Zach. Uh, RJ Morrison, uh, my background... I started in Boston, uh, Massachusetts as an EMT paramedic, you know, wanted to change the world, as they say, and then uh, went into the management field midway through the career. Uh, uh, about eight, almost 10 years ago now, I moved out to California to uh, manage a couple of organizations out here. Um, Oh, you guys would love our room. Yeah, so when you're saying, you know, you're <laughs> suffering from, you know, I'm like, can I just borrow some, um, you know? Just a little bit. Right now, bit. I believe the we have fire in Riverside County. I think they're at like 20% containment. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's definitely... I'll take rain over uh, fires, but yeah. So you moved to California yeah. about 10 years ago. <clears throat> I've been on here ever since. You know, I, if I've settled in. This is now my new home. Uh, I never thought I would say it, but I mean, it's 60 degrees out. It's too cold for me. I need a jacket. So I can't <laughs> go back to Boston or, or tell people I'm from New England in that sense. Uh, but uh, I've been... Yeah, we'll we'll chew you up and we'll yeah, spit you I, I out. Can't, you complain about I sixty can't degree do weather. It's, it's crazy that way. But uh, so I've been out here. Uh, I was up till the beginning of this year. I was managing organizations uh, local to Los Angeles. I was in Southern California, Northern California. Uh, but then I made a made a change, a career change, and uh, went into the technology side and I started working for TraumaSoft, um, which I was introduced to the program because I was using it as a an administrator. Um, for my staff and, and such. So it's a, definitely a, a change in, you know, going full circle in a sense of 
doing this job a little bit. We'll be right back after this quick break for ads. The Readiness Lab is trailblazing disaster readiness. Early access for the highly anticipated course, Emergency Management Response for Dynamic Populations is currently live. Space is limited to 40. Go to thereadinesslab.com forward slash training to learn more. The L3 Harris Extreme 400P radio solves problems and is specifically designed for emergency services. How do we know? We field tested it with medical, urban search and rescue, and collapse and confined structures. This radio is amazingly tough. Check out the L3 Harris Extreme 400P radio at l3harris.com right now. How do you spell Doberman Emergency Management? EOP, OEP, HVA, HMP, Thyra, TTX, Drone, PDA. Whenever you need an expert, Doberman Emergency Management field experts are there for support. Contact an expert at DobermanEMG.com today. I think it's uh it's good. Uh, so TraumaSoft uh, is a is a management system for EMS, but it does a whole bunch of things. Um, and I think it's really interesting that you went from a, a practice you know practitioner into this. It's I did the same thing actually with Everbridge. Uh, I I was a emergency manager who used Everbridge, was super familiar with it, and then went over and worked for them uh, for a few years. And um, the reason that I think it's really smart for tech companies to do that is like uh, there's a lot of software out there in public safety and emergency management that is designed for us but not by us. And when you have a system like that, that doesn't actually take into account the people who are going to use it, you know, it's essentially functioning as though a designer or a, a, an engineer took a look at like what they think we do. And then they tried to, uh, replicate that. And I think that that is, uh, almost always a recipe for disaster, if not just making things far more complicated than they should be. So what got you to jump from actually being the, you know, on the practitioner side into the technology side? Like, well, that's a big leap for a lot of folks. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, from someone who, you know, was a, a paramedic, a doer, and now you are on right. the other side trying to help out those folks. Which is, you know, you made a great point there when you talk about people that are designing the programs that aren't from the industry. So TraumaSoft, ironically, um, the the founders uh, owned an ambulance company, and they were kind of sick and tired of using the, I won't name drop in a sense, but the big the big brands that were out there, <laughs> that all my competitors now, right? Sure. Um, and, and, you know, they... Yeah. Everybody wanted to do, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but then it turned into everybody had, you know, 15 different logins and going into 15 different programs. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Brian Balo, along with uh, Mike Kaufman, who are the co-founders of Tramosoft, they started building this platform to, you know, eliminate all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so it's, you know, having people that have, you know, Brian was a paramedic uh, for, you know, since like the 90s early nineties or something like that. Um, so being a practitioner, he's built what it is today. And when I started using the platform at first, I was kind of like, you know, I came from the, the, the big competitors and, you know, their fancy pretty yeah. colors and all that other stuff. But as I started to dive in more and more on the platform, I'm like, no, I really like this because it's user friendly. Right. I mean, if anybody that has done administration and has used certain programs and doing data analysis and stuff, you know, you have to have like a PhD in crystal reporting in order to, to do any type of analytics, <laughs> uh, which <clears throat> I always tell people all the time, I, you know, cause they're like, Oh, you work for an IT company. I'm like, no, 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 I can spell IT. I don't know how to do anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, don't ask me how to do change a deck or something. I mean, I'm learning terms that I have no idea what they mean, but sure. some people that are like, yeah, I'm like, like you have a five, nine server. I'm like, sure. No idea what it means, but apparently it's a, yeah. Full stack development. You're like the only full stack I care about is a full stack of pancakes. <laughs> Everything else I don't right. care about. With Vermont maple syrup, just saying. Uh, With Vermont. A little plug. A little, right, a little right plug. There. Yes. Good callback. <laughs> um, so, you know, when I was, looking at it, maybe I wouldn't say a career change in a sense, but I was starting to wind down from being, you know, I have young kids. So the, you know, Monday, the Sunday yeah. to, to Saturday, 24 hours a day being on call, you know, for every little thing, whether it's a car accident or, or let's you know, an employee getting injured, I was getting a little burnt out from it. So I was looking to sure. make a change to something else. And, um, the, uh, I happen to know the, the VP or I'm sorry, he's the CRO, uh, 
of the of TraumaSoft, and we were talking, and as a customer, you know, I've always been a vocal person on different things, and he's like, you know, we're looking for somebody to work in the West Coast, um, and specifically California, because California, when it comes to labor management out here, um, there are so many, so many nuances of different laws that, you know, you sure. can't, you know, they say, you know, you can hire a lawyer and help you with stuff. No, you have to actually find a specifically trained lawyer in, out here to work. So TraumaSoft, with a lot of the plot programs that we have, the different modules, you know, there is a huge thing with, you know, we, we do what they call, out here we call it C7 compliance, which is uh, lunch breaks and monitoring them when that yeah. happens and stuff like that. So we're the only platform that I've seen that is, you know, has that ability to do those things. So a lot of things like that was just like an interest and I'm like, sure, you know, I'll try it. But, you know, I coming on board, I was like, listen, I'm not a salesman here. You know, I'm not good at this. <laughs> He's like, no, you don't, you yeah. don't have to well, be. You just have to talk about it. Yeah. I, I've actually found the same sort of, uh, I obviously like in my day job, like we have to, like we're a private sector emergency management company. So we still have to get contracts. We still have to like go out and like engage with folks. I'm actually a terrible salesman. Uh, I, uh, don't, <laughs> I'm not good at, uh, I don't want to say lying, not all salespeople right. lie, <laughs> but certainly there is a tactic there where they embellish maybe reality. And I'm just not good at that. I'm like the good old, like new England Vermonter who like is too kind and gets run over by everyone else. So, uh, but because I know what I'm talking about and because I am passionate about my field, it actually is extremely valuable. Um, and I imagine it's probably very similar with you. Like when you're in the trenches and like, you're looking for stuff to like make your job easier, uh, you know, you want to find the company that actually like gives a crap about you. And a lot of them, you know, like, I, I, and I'm not, I'm just saying this very generalized, yeah. like not every company is dirty. Right. Not every private sector venture that's working in public safety is just out there to get money. Um, but there's certainly many of them out there that, you know, just don't seem to fully grasp like what it's like on the other side. And in EMS in particular, um, the field is struggling, yeah. um, and continues to struggle. Um, and honestly, like that was one of the things that sort of, uh, you know, uh, led me to this conversation was, um, you know, uh, I, I had a cold email from, uh, Victor, uh, who's working with yep. you guys and marketing and stuff. And he was like, Hey, I think, you know, based on your sort of discussions, like you should chat with, uh, trauma soft because, um, you're talking about the things that we're talking about. So staff burnout, innovating a field that is very difficult to innovate in. Um, you know, like certainly the, the practical side of like EMS, like there's all sorts of innovation in, um, technology sure. that's being put into ambulances and stuff, but the culture, the structure, uh, the attitude, like those things take a lot of time to change. And so when you start introducing technologies on top of that, it can make things really complicated. So maybe talk a little bit about like how you sort of see trauma soft fitting into that, or maybe some ways that you all are innovating in that. <clears throat> Cause I think our audience is emergency managers primarily, but we have a lot of public safety folks and EMS in many cases falls under the emergency managers purview, but it's like, that other thing you have dispatch, you have emergency, uh, your general EM stuff, and then you have EMS and, um, trying to manage all that is really complicated. So your software can make that better. Yeah. Um, that, that's our goal, right? I mean, the goal is to always make it better. And, yeah. you know, uh, having, you know, you are hundred percent, the, the labor force that we're working with one, it's, you know, at my age, I, you know, I don't think I'm that old, but then I realized in the, in the industry, I'm an old dinosaur because I got 20 years in, right? I'm like, <laughs> wow, we're, yeah. we're, I was thinking, you know, back to when I was in my early twenties, like looking at the guys that were in their forties and I'm like, wow, you guys have been in this, I can't do that. And the next, you know, here I am. Right. <laughs> so <clears throat> one thing is that, that with our program, when it comes to managing, you know, we have modules that will do our scheduling and, you know, yeah. deployment resources and, you know, do analytics and stuff like that, which is all kind of, you know, part of the job, whatever. But um, what we're doing, interestingly, for, you know, the newer generation, basically, you know, the frankly, it's the the social, social media, you know, kings and queens nowadays, basically, coming in. And, you know, I yeah. can turn on Instagram, but don't ask me to do anything with it. But um, we're building platforms that are apps which are what they know how to use and and people that we're using to build them are their age actually one of our project leads that's building our we have a 
application called Core, which is for the employees to use. It's interactive social media type of thing where, you know, they can talk to each other, have little chat groups, uh, stay engaged with what's going on. And, you know, we could put feeds into it to have different, uh, you know, news and EMS world coming out, things like that, where they can interact with it. But it's an app. And, you know, the person that's building it is, you know, he's in his mid 20s. And this is what they do. This is why they know they had to live in that world. So, um, which yeah. is, you know, a concept for, you know, EMS managers, because, you know, ask every one of us, we're the best ones that there are, no matter where. We're, you know, I can do the job better than anybody else. Just ask me. Um, but this is something that we're, we're falling. <laughs> the right, absolutely. I mean, anybody that says they don't have that is lying, right? I mean, I have to say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if we, if you were to ask me to come up with that idea, I would be like, no, I couldn't help you there. But we're engaging. Well, and it's, I yeah, and I think it's the. This is the thing. Uh, so we chatted a while. It was like almost a month ago, yeah. I think. Uh, and one of the things that really like flicked a light bulb in my head was, hey, yes, the app is awesome. I think uh, for a number of reasons, like you know, the the days of being able to sit around a station and wait for a call gone. are yeah. gone. Like it just doesn't exist. Either the agency is too resource strapped or too mm -hmm. busy to have time to sort of catch up with your, uh, you know, your fellow EMTs <clears throat> and paramedics and everything else. So just having that, like w some way to sort of coordinate all that. And then the other thing that I think is really important is like, we are also facing, you know, a mental Absolutely. health crisis on top of everything else. So, uh, huge increases, you know, in suicides. I mean, I've, I've known far too many people, uh, in public safety, uh, you know, who have either committed suicide or gotten so close, uh, that, you know, just it, it, part of that has to do with that loss of connection. Right. And, you know, you all are recognizing this and are leaning into it, um, in ways that I had not heard of another company doing, um, as part of like a management platform right. as well. So it's not just like, this is its own thing. It's like, this is part of the apps. Like this is, uh, I guess like, I mean, I, I was going to say the core of the company, uh, but that's also the right. app name, uh, <laughs> app, you know, aptly. Uh, but the, it is the core of your, uh, organization that you recognize this and that you're trying to improve it in whatever way that you can. Absolutely. You know, and, and that is a, uh, mental health nowadays. And then we were talking earlier that, you know, my wife is a clinical psychologist, so mental health is a, is a, is yeah. a daily thing in my house, you know, uh, for mainly for her because she needs, you know, to be able to off that. But, you know, when, <clears throat> speaking of, of, of for, you know, our organization, you know, one of the things we're doing with our app is, you know, we're putting in basically we're trying to find a way to put in a, a almost like a heat lamp in a sense on employees to have them answer a couple questions or you know, select the, you know, kind of look at the pain scale type of thing and select like, you know, what their mood is yeah. to kind of be able to do a temperature check of seeing how people are doing. Um, I happen to be on the, the board of directors for the Code Green campaign, which is mental health awareness um, and TraumaSoft. Awesome program. And, yep. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, TraumaSoft is a, is a proud corporate sponsor of us. So, you know, it is in the forefront because we've all experienced or, or or know people that have had people that have completed suicide or even attempted and stuff like that. So it's yeah. very, very, very true that the, the and it's not just mental health in itself. There's parts of it, too, of kind of like, you know, the well-being of an individual. Right. I mean, the work life balance is a big thing nowadays, too. Yeah. You know, where we were talking about sitting back at the station and hanging, you know. I can remember for years, we'd, at the end of your 24, you'd still sit around there for probably an hour or so, chewing the fat, maybe make coffee for the group, and we'd just hang out for a little bit. But now it's like, my shift's over, got to go, right? There's no, there is that, there's yeah. no camaraderie. Not that there isn't, but it's not, it's not the same uh, as it was sure. before. But yeah. this, our goal with this app is to kind of give that ability to still be there in the realm that your staff wants to be right. They want to be on the kind of the, the social yeah. media aspects. So let it be that way and let that be the way that they can connect with each other and still build that camaraderie and, you know, that willingness to participate in different, in different ways, however way it may look for them. Um, but that's, that is a hundred percent, you know, one of the core points, no pun there, but core points with the, with our platform is to, to stay engaged with 
everything. I mean, our, our CAD is a visual CAD, so it flashes and makes different colors and things like that. So it's all about, you know, that mind stimulation of what's going on to be looking at, you know, what's happening and, it, and engaging you. That's 100%. It's 100% of engagement and keeping an interest. Because if not, it's just like, you know, you look at a cardiac monitor, the same, you know, QRS complex, and then all of a sudden it goes into VTAC, you're like, ooh, shiny object, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we kind of do the same thing. We want it to be kind of like, oh, shiny object. What is going on here? Let's look at this. You know, um, it has to do with yeah. work. And, you know, some people are like, I don't want to. But no, it, it's still, it's, there is an interest. It's just to what level, right? It, it, that's the part. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think, uh, so the other, the other area that I think is really fascinating, um, and in the conversation we had before, um, we had, uh, I believe it was one of the co-founders that yep, had jumped that on Mike. the call. Yep, um, yeah. And, uh, he was sort of talking about just how, uh, not only are you all and and like, this is like almost as an industry, uh, trying to not just like make things more efficient, which is really critical. Cause again, EMS fire police in particular, um, and actually I'm seeing this now, even on the emergency management side, uh, everyone's short staff. So there just isn't as many hands to do stuff. So like handing off, uh, the menial stuff to the computers to take care of, and then keeping the, that opens up more time to work on the more important stuff, like the human side of it and engaging with your, uh, personnel so that it's not just like, Oh, RJ, like, uh, you know, I'm just checking in cause I need a vacation day right. or something and I need your approval. And that's the only real interaction you have is like, you know, either menial tasks, you know, uh, getting someone in trouble, you know, cause they screwed up, not, not giving the, the opportunity to do the mentoring, check on your folks to make sure that they're actually taking care of themselves. And frankly, like helping to alleviate the burnout, right. which is like, uh, there's not a public safety industry that right now that that is not like the word of the day, like burnout, burnout, burnout. And that includes supervisors, right? Yep. Cause when everyone at the bottom leaves, you're back on the yep. truck. Yep. Um, so I guess how, how does trauma soft <clears throat> and maybe even talk about like technology in general, how you see it sort of helping to alleviate that, uh, in the, you know, not just EMS, but like across. So the I, I see, you know, with, with technology and again, it's what, it's it's one of those great things to say that I've seen it come up in a sense, right? Going from using yeah. paper PCRs to using ePCRs, right? I mean, that was like a, a big thing, a change in technology. That's what our industry is going with. Um, but nowadays with, you know, 100%, there is a huge disconnect. And it's, I have to say, I, I was a culprit of it as well, that at times, the only time I ever learned some of my employees' names was because I was there was there was a reason they did something wrong. And there wasn't that engagement. And towards the end, I was like, you know what? It's time to forget that part. And I, I, I wanted to learn who the individual is, right? That, that, and so sure. what I started doing was at one point we were doing, you know, kind of like the employee of the month, right? You know, it's always kind of a tongue in cheek, so to speak. But I was, uh, one of the organizations I was with, we came up with the idea of having about 15 different titles that we gave people every month. And we were looking at, yeah. you know, we, there was one like Jumpin' Jack Flash, who had the fastest, you know, from at scene <laughs> to destination time, right? You know, basically on an emergency, you know, went from their complete assessment to when they got to the hospital. Granted, in California, they'd be sitting there for seven hours at the wall waiting to drop off the patient, but that's a whole <laughs> other story. But even that, but even yeah. that actually is, you know, technology wise, like, you know, one of the things with uh, TraumaSoft's platform is we, there's a, a way to kind of set like tickers in a sense, like, you know, you want to check on a crew yeah. what's going on, you know, and when you have crews in, in I'm going to say pick on California, but, uh, you know, here they will be sitting at a hospital, you know, in the height of COVID in a sense, right? Or even, even still now, but they'd be sitting waiting to offload their patient for 10 to 12 hours, right? And they're just yeah. sitting there. They can't do anything. They can't leave. They have, you know, patient care, patient management. And it's like, you know what? I need to figure out a way. I have to one, know that they're doing it. Two, I need somebody to go in there and check on them and, hey, go take a lunch break. Take, you know, somebody sit in and, yeah. you know, and maintain that engagement with them because it's like, you know what? They are sick and tired. No different than we are, right? As managers, I'm like, well, I want my crew. I want my resource back. But they're sitting there like, oh, I'm going to sit. I got to hold the wall. You know, so much for getting out on time, right? Which then turns into a whole other issue, right? So then you need to start 
Yeah, now your shift is all jacked up. So, and- you know, with the platform, you know, people are always penalized on you're showing up late to your shift. You're showing up late to your shift, right? And and a lot of the platforms out there um, that I've used where it's like you could only, there's no way to like kind of subtract the point or put conditions where, hey, it's, you know, you got out five hours late yesterday, which is why you were tired and came in late this morning, right? Our platform yeah. gives you the ability to look at it and go, hey, look, you know, as you're, as you're applying the, the metrics to it and go, you know what, RJ, you got out like six hours late. He came in 10 minutes late this next morning. Uh, we're not going to, that point does not go to him. You know why? Because it's like, you know, we, where he got held over on the back end, where was my, you know, sorry to you for that? You know, let's say you child yeah. care and things like that. You had to go pick up your kid from daycare. Now you're paying penalties and we're having somebody else have to go pick him up and stuff. So, our, our platform allows a manager to actually look at those things and also finding key people within your organization, which is also a big thing. Having the right people do the right thing. That's 100% yeah. also part of it. And, you know, you can see that with some of our, with our, with the technology of how people are interacting with things. You know, there's an organization here in California that um, is, frankly, I mean, if I could have worked for them when I was a young EMT paramedic, I would have been a heartbeat. You know, they have the, the, yeah, they do use a lot of technology. They do a lot of analytics, but they support their staff like crazy. Like some of them will just, the ones that yeah. just graduate from college will say they're on their, on their in LinkedIn profile celebrating them. They're, I think they're, they're ranked, yeah. the, they've been ranked for the last couple of years, like, you know, the top. 100 companies to work for by Glassdoor, which is 100% based on voting and stuff like there's no, you know, you can Yeah, from the rent. employees, so, yeah. You know, that type of stuff is part of what, as EMS managers, like administrators that we have to worry about, you know, for profit or nonprofit organizations, it doesn't matter. And um, the, uh, oh, for some reason, my computer just went like, are you still there? Yeah, okay, I'm still sorry here. about that. My, all of a sudden, I lost. No worries. I'll make a marker there. You can just cut this <clears throat> out. So the the interaction that takes place um, utilizing the software and keeping your staff engaged, I want to say that our platform does it the best, to be honest. And it's you know obviously there's a bias, yeah. right? But um, sure. <laughs> but do you have you. You know what though? I, you know, be proud of that. Like that's a, if that is a feature that like, you know, again, like we've talked about, like, uh, again, I'm not a, a podcaster that brings on a company to pitch right. its product. Honestly, like I only, uh, in fact, our company as a whole only really sort of pitches or seek sponsors or whatever with people that we've worked with or that we just like, we're like, dude, these align, they align with us. Like they are in the same mindset. And I think it's totally okay to celebrate that like your company actually is doing their best and that like there's organizations that like are also on top of it. And, um, and I think maybe, uh, just cause we're getting towards the, the tail end of this, like I, you've, you've been in the field for a long time. You've seen the evolution of EMS. So like we've talked about how software is, is one part of that, but what are the other things that maybe some of the like emergency managers or EMS managers that are listening to this need to start thinking about, you know, in their careers, uh, about how to maybe, you know, software is obviously one sure. component. Um, but like you've seen it, like what else should they be considering with this burnout and what other sort of like solutions have you come across or thoughts that you have to help, you know, keep this going? Cause I think talking about that, I, I, I unfortunately, um, I, I did a lot of recruitment and retention on the departments that I was on. I love doing that. I love welcoming new people in. I love working with people and trying to keep them in. Um, but what I found most of the time is that a lot of the issues were not the call volume, the no time. It, it's actually much more just culture yes. and not being a culture that actually really truly cares about the folks. And like, you know, having that, like, if you're not in, you're not right. in, you know, gatekeeping right. and stuff. Um, and so I guess in, in your experience, like what are some things, you know, as you've sort of sunsetted your, your management career that you've learned that maybe you could pass on to our <clears> listeners? I mean, the biggest thing is the, to, for the old timers, and I'm going to say, you know, me included, we need to break the mentality of um, the, you need to have be, you know, tough skin. You, you have to be, you know, yeah. the old glory days of the more blood you got on you, the better the call was, right? Um, that stuff has yeah. to, 
it has to go away. You know, hazing, you know, I can remember hazing when I when a freshman in the field, that was a, you know, expected type of thing. Um, but sure. culturistically now, managers have to, you know, focus on, you know, there's a, a person I hear, uh, somebody I know, Danielle Thomas, who always says, just be kind. Uh, and that's yeah. honestly, it's kind of, it's 100% true. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's a human. Everybody has, you know, emotions, you know, has their different needs, right? You're right, 100%. It's not necessarily the call button. Sometimes it's a call button. But honestly, it's that they feel that they're being appreciated in some way. And it's not just, and I hate to say it, uh, but, you know, it's not just EMS week, right? It's It needs yeah. to be around the around the, the calendar and um you know one of the phrases where our, our our tagline for the code green campaign is using a name not red so the idea behind that is is that people do eventually go out and get help and you know make it you know they they seek the help that they need in order to prevent unfortunately an inevitable thing of them trying to complete suicide commit suicide and we never actually acknowledge the ones that were able to do something for themselves and or yeah. much less even acknowledge that the managers managers or supervisors or even just a peer peer review in a sense um are engaging the staff to help them and we need to listen to those things that that's the biggest thing that i would ever that i say now that i wish i knew five years ago which would change the you know how i would yeah. manage a couple of companies in the last five years is you know we actually need to shut up and listen and act and have people show us that they're smarter than you and listen to what they have to say. That's amazing advice. Uh, and I think <clears throat> especially a lot of our folks that are listening that are maybe on that cusp, either they're leaders and they're seeing their folks struggling and they don't know what to do, or they're the ones struggling and they don't know how to approach the leader. There's like that, 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 gap there that I think, uh, is really challenging. Now with the g generation that's coming up, this is where like a thing, like an app could actually be really important. Like the generation coming up doesn't have as much experience with the face to face right, conversation. Right. Uh, they tend to be less sort of like more standoffish in that sense. And that's not to say that that's everyone. And certainly, um, you know, there's plenty of people who will be happy to stand up and advocate for themselves, but there's also plenty who aren't. So having the, like making sure that you're reaching your audience in the best way, whatever that is, you know, it could be the tack board in the station on the wall. It could be, uh, you know, uh, a phone call. It could be the app. Um, you know, just checking in on your folks is, is really important. And the be kind thing is just, uh, I I've sort of recently had a bout of just interactions with folks in my field where I'm like, what is happening right, right now? Like, why are we all being jerks to each other? And a lot of it has to do with like, everyone's yep. tired. We're in this poly crisis, uh, there's disasters everywhere and there's no, you know, it feels like relentless and the pace stinks and all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, but have, if we all can just sort of like pause and just be like, yes, tell me what's going on. Uh, I get that you're frustrated. Like, let's talk about it. Um, you know, you will save a life. Like, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's so much data out there that says like, you know, the, the folks that didn't complete suicide, it was like, you know, that last second, either pause on their own part, which is really hard to do in that time. Um, or it's someone who's just like, Hey, what's going on? You know, and an EMS in particular, I, I have so much empathy and like, you know, just I, like my EMS people, especially managing a student EMS service for, uh, six years and seeing, you know, kids go through, right. I mean, the ringer, we had some just terrible, terrible calls while I was there. And, you know, these are kids that are just coming up and to see their resiliency, which is like uh, another thing that I think is really important that people don't recognize. And you guys talked about it on our previous calls, just like the resilient, trying to build that resiliency in folks. Um, don't discount your people as not being resilient or capable or hardworking or, you know, thoughtful or whatever. Like, uh, like you said, we all kind of come into work each day with whatever we're carrying from the day before and the weeks before and the years right. before. Um, and so just having that little that little just pause of like, I care about you. I want you to succeed. Uh, you know, let's, let's <clears throat> succeed together. And I think that'll, of course, high pay would also help. Like let's pay EMS what they deserve for yeah, crying out loud. I saw you censor yourself there for a second. I swear that the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a hundred percent that the, the people that say, you know, leave home at home and work at work. I'm sorry, unless you're bipolar, there's really no way to separate the two. 
I, 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 yeah, what, how do you possibly do that? Right. Yeah. I mean, and I always say that I, I worked for owners that were like, they need, that's not, there's nothing to do with work. Yes, it does. It, yeah. Everything has to do with work. Yeah, of course everything it does. Home yeah. has to do with, with work. Work has to do with home. You know, it's the, the, the psychological term is attunement that, um, you know, gives you the ability and this will go to the older generation that you worked with, you had the same partner for five years. You just, you didn't yeah. have to actually verbally say anything, but if you looked at them a certain way, they it's knew true. what you needed next, right? Because you guys had that connection. Yeah. That connection is yeah. like this now. I mean, it's, it's like Swiss cheese. Yeah. And we need to yeah. change that to, it's, you know, you know, a nice Parmesan or something. I don't know. Food anal- I don't know why I'm going <laughs> food analogies, but that's what happens. <laughs> Yeah, no, a nice melted gruyere. There you go. Uh, you know, talk. Nice and smooth and creamy and everyone's happy. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess uh, before we go, uh, do you have any like uh, interesting uh, stories from your time in EMS? Like a, a, a call that just like was like mind boggling that you just always are like, oh my God, I can't believe I just went yeah, through that. You know, I, there's probably a bunch of those, but it's more actually the... Yeah. For me, it's always the watching the. I was a t- I taught at uh, North Dakota University EMT school forever and a day, and there was an individual and a student that I had, and this is obviously it's unrelated, uh, not treatment, but he was a plumber. He was sure. a plumber, and he could not fathom how basically the the blood returned to the heart. He just couldn't, for some reason, <laughs> fathom how it was working, and. I came up with on the spot. Uh, I did, I used a toilet, a tub, and a, a sewer system <laughs> somehow, and he came up with a way to explain it. And then afterwards, he's like, "Makes total sense to me." And I'm like, "This is actually kind of cool." You know, I just took something out of completely nothing and made him. Yeah. You know, what an awesome teaching moment. And that's it's kind of like those are the moments that are you know I remember everything else. We've you know yeah. unfortunately we've all seen death, you know, bad car accidents. And things like that, but in, which are always the ones that your friends ask you, hey, what's the worst thing you've ever seen? Oh, yeah, yeah the gore, you really yeah. Know? Uh, you get the front row seat. I, I think a lot of people, uh, I wish, honestly, one thing that I found, and I don't know if it's recently, maybe you've noticed it too, there is this huge emphasis on sort of just all the trauma yeah. of the industry and like the bad stuff. And I'm like, 100%. Like, you're going to see bad stuff. I always, t- in fact, I always did a gut check with our new members, just being like, you know, like we're going to have a lot of really good times. It's going to be tons and tons of fun. But occasionally, this job is going to yep. suck. And, uh, you know, you just have to be prepared for that and we'll get through it. And now, I mean, like we didn't have a lot of the treatments like now with, uh, the, uh, EMDR and these other like treatments that are like almost immediately and getting rid of the old, Oh my God. I don't know how many uh, times we went to a uh, critical incident stress debriefing. And I'm like, are we trying to out morbid each other? Like, uh, like my right. experience is worse than your experience and stuff. It just, I never felt like it was working. Um, and now like, I think we have to get back into like, I get like, there's a lot of burnout. There's all that bad stuff, but man, some of the best times I ever had as a, a, a an adult, as a kid, like I, I started at 17 was at the firehouse or doing EMS. Like it is such a cool job and you get a front row seat to the craziest, the funniest, the weirdest stuff that nobody else gets to see. And I think we have to get back into like really celebrating how cool the job is. And like, I, I understand like we're, we're suffering and the pay sucks. We definitely have to improve that. Um, but we also have to sort of also rebuild that, like what makes this job cool and get people into it again. Because I think a lot of young people are scared out of it because they think it's just going to be nothing but trauma and blood and pain. Um, and you know, it's not mm-hmm. all that it's a lot of really good stuff and you're not going to help anyone in your life. Like you help someone on even a basic EMS call. Like most people will never have that experience. And I think it's just so cool. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on and sort of talking about your experiences as well as trauma soft um, how can people find trauma soft? What's the best uh, way? So, Traumasoft.com. Uh, you will find all of the information there. There's a, you know, if you want to see more of the, like, the actual software, you can go on and request a demo. Uh, and depending on where you are, it's, it could be myself or some of my colleagues will reach out to you and, uh, you know, show you whatever you want to see. Uh, we have a, uh, conference coming up next year in February. It's a user conference, but, you know, we'd also invite people to Oh, cool. Uh, to come, it's going to be in Orlando. Um, it's oh, not nice. going to be during a hurricane season. We had that last year. Um, 
<laughs> we had, yeah. we were flying out as fast as we could because the conference ended, the hurricane hit. I mean, that was a, that was a, so yeah. we flipped. We had a uh, training event in Orlando in uh, end of November. Uh, everything was still being uh, impacted by Hurricane Ian at yeah, that point. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so we were, uh, myself and a couple of my colleagues were jumping in a car from Orlando to go to Tampa to get on a flight to fly to Boston just to get out of there. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. you know. We, oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> so, but yeah. is I mean, the trip doesn't right. sound that cool, but the uh, conference the sounds, sounds awesome. It's good. It's, gonna, uh, it's going to be at Margaritaville this year. Uh, oh, next oh, year. Wow. Oh, sweet. Um, so yeah, there's also yep. that. So you know, or you know, you can reach out to uh, go to the website. You can reach out to myself. You can I'll share with uh, Zach my uh, my information and you know introduce you to some of our current clients. You can take a look at it that way too. Awesome. Well, thank you, RJ. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, uh, we don't generally pitch uh, software or stuff unless we, uh, you know, really like it. And, um, you know, uh, actually, to be honest, this is like I did more background with you guys than I have in like <laughs> almost any of my podcasts. Uh, Victor, uh, shout out to Victor, who, uh, you know, he does his homework and uh, he tracked everything down and he came up with some cool, uh, cool things to talk about. Um, but I really appreciate having you on. I think what you guys are doing gr is great. Uh, definitely check out uh, Code Green, yep. Code Green campaign, uh, which is the yep. foundation and the um, that uh, you know uh, for EMS uh, mental health um, and suicide prevention. I, I think that that's another huge cause. And uh, thank you for everyone for listening. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, thumbs up, five stars, all that stuff. Comment on everything. Uh, talk to me. I want to hear from you. Like these are the reason I found RJ was because someone sent me a message randomly, and I want to talk to you all. You don't want to just listen to me <laughs> chat all the time. Uh, and we want to go out and like learn about the cool stuff like TraumaSoft. So uh, thanks, RJ. Thank Have you. a good rest you of too. your day.